welcome to Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. You all are going to be climbing the tallest brick lighthouse in North and South America. So we're going to be going up 257 stairs and it's the equivalent of climbing a 12 story building. So I hope you did your stretches for this morning. Let's go ahead and get started. So this is the fuel storage tank, and this is where they would store all of the kerosene fuel to light the Fresnel lens that was lit up at the top. So the lighthouse keepers, they would have had to carry two 40-pound fuel canisters up the lighthouse with them. So there's eight landings in the lighthouse, and those were designed for the lighthouse keepers to stop, set their oil tanks down, and take breaks, which is what we're gonna do today. So these stairs were all replaced in 2008. They used the original molding, so it looks very similar to the original, but it's the new cast iron. There are alternate landings all the way up throughout the lighthouse, and on each landing there's a window. There's a north-facing view and a south-facing view. So they provided these windows for us because obviously there was no electricity, so it provided a lot of light for the lighthouse keepers, and also to get some nice airflow circulation throughout the lighthouse. The windows during the summer when the lighthouse opens in the third Friday of every April, the maintenance crew will open the windows and they'll stay open all summer long unless we have a big hurricane coming, then they'll come and close the windows. The next landing that we're going to be getting to is the halfway mark. So after this landing, we have 124 more stairs to climb. And you'll notice this uh, piece of railing that is going through the center of the lighthouse. Um, now it's wired for electricity, but in the olden days we had a Fresnel lens that lit the light. And so there would have been 150 pound weights that would slowly descend through the middle of the lighthouse and this railing would guide those weights down. So the momentum of those weights falling through the center would cause the Fresnel lens to spin, so it kind of worked as a grandfather clock. We actually had one of the, um, the last lighthouse keeper's daughters who grew up here, and she was telling us stories of how her and her sisters would swing from the weight side by side to play inside of the lighthouse, which was really neat. As they were building the lighthouse, the lighthouse board wanted this lighthouse to be the most imposing and substantial lighthouse on the continent, if not the world. And so that's why they used only the finest materials to build the lighthouse. So when we get up to this landing, you'll notice the black slate and the white marble that is on all of the landings. And so if you look really closely, you can see actually some fossils in the black slate. And then the base of the lighthouse was uh, mined from a quarry in Vermont, and it's all granite on the base. So the lighthouse keepers had many jobs in the lighthouse, and one of them was giving tours to local residents. When the lighthouse was electrified in 1934, everybody wanted to come and see the electric light in the lighthouse. And so the, our last lighthouse keeper we had, Mr. Yunaka Jeanette, he wrote in his journal that he gave 17 tours to locals throughout the day. So can you imagine climbing up and down the lighthouse 17 times in one day? You can see that the paint is chipping along the walls here. Typically every five years the lighthouse gets painted and it was last painted in 2014. They used 450 gallons of paint to do that. The final staircase is a little bit different. There's no handrails and there's a door that leads to uh, up on the balcony and this door was used for really gusty days or during storms the lighthouse keepers could close that that way the gusts coming up through the lighthouse wouldn't blow out the oil lamp. The lighthouse is still in operation to this day. We have a seven and a half second flash and the light goes out into the ocean about 20 miles on a clear day. And it's still used as a second form of navigation. Although a lot of uh, mariners these days are using GPS and more modern form. This still serves as a confirmation for local fishing boats and mariners out at sea. 
And now we're entering to where the pedestal once stood. So the Fresnel lens would have been 12 feet high by six feet wide. And the base of it would have been right here where this table was. And this is closed to the public. Uh, only the Coast Guard is allowed up there to change the bulbs twice a year. The bulb that is in the lighthouse now is 800,000 candle power. It's a thousand watt halogen bulb and one bulb costs $240 to replace. We have now made it to the top, so welcome. This summer is really unique because we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the lighthouse being moved here at um, Cape Hatteras National Seashore. And when you're up on top of the balcony, you can actually see where the lighthouse used to sit in its original location and the moving path that the lighthouse took to get here. So the lighthouse used to sit, if you can see that brown structure going into the ocean over there, that's the groin. There were a series of three of those built to help uh, restore the beaches. And the lighthouse sat right in front of that first groin, right behind that grassy sand dune. You can kind of see a big sandy area. And this clear cut through the trees right here is the moving path that it took to get from all the way over there to right here where we are today. It was a 23 day long journey um, to move it 2,900 feet. So just over a half of a mile. 20 years ago, everything was moved, not just the lighthouse. So if you look down, you can see the two homes where the lighthouse keepers once lived. All of those buildings were moved as well, along with the sidewalk. So everything's in proportion to how it was set up in the old location. In the new location, it was put about 1,500 feet away from the ocean. And back in 1870, when this lighthouse was built in the old location, it was about 1,500 feet from the ocean then. And now you can see just how close the ocean is. So it's possible with barrier island migration and how these islands move, that in the next 80 to 100 years, we may be facing the same situation we did 20 years ago. You get a really great shot of Cape Point over here, and this was pretty much the main reason why we needed such a tall lighthouse in the area. We have two really major currents that are basically meeting right over there at the point. We have the Labrador current that's flowing north to south with the really cold water. And then of course we have the Gulf Stream that is flowing south to north with that really warm water. And with those currents, they push a lot of sand and sediment, which builds underwater sand mountains basically. Basically. And some of these sand mountains can be about 250 feet high under the water. So mariners would be in really deep water and then all of a sudden the bottoms of their boats would hit these big shoals under the water. And so this area out here is called the graveyard of the Atlantic because so many ships wrecked out along the shore here of the Outer Banks. Really hope to see you in person here on the grounds. Uh, the lighthouse is open for climbing daily until Columbus Day, October 14th. Uh, we are open nine o'clock is the first climb every day and you have to be here by 4.30 to get your last climb at 4.40 of the day. So thanks for visiting and we hope to see you soon.